So today I have this really interesting problem for you that has to do with relationships of a function and its derivatives. And it turns out that this relationship can tell you completely about the function. And we can learn a lot about interpretations of the geometry of a function from inequalities involving the derivative. And the problem states to find all twice continuously differentiable, meaning that the second derivative is continuous, functions f defined on the real numbers whose outputs are the positive reals. This is going to be really important. That satisfy this inequality that when you take the second derivative and multiply by the original function itself is greater than or equal to twice the first derivative squared, regardless of what value of x you plug in. Okay, so this is going to involve two parts, and this is actually a problem from the most recent IMC 2020, which is an international mathematics competition for university students. And the interesting part about this is that it really comes down to two pieces, in my opinion. One is understanding or recognizing where such an inequality can even come from. And secondly, interpreting, once you have an idea where this inequality comes from, what it actually means geometrically. Okay, so first I want to rearrange the inequality for a bit. So I'm going to rearrange it to be f prime or f double prime of x times f of x minus twice f prime of x squared is greater than or equal to zero. And the question is, where can something like this possibly pop up? So we have here the second derivative of f multiplied by f, and then we have the first derivative multiplied by itself. So if you think about this, and you think about the way that the product or the quotient rules work, you often have something like this, where it seems like this might be related to something dealing with f and its first derivative in some way, where we take f and then differentiate its first derivative, and then we have the first derivative differentiated with f itself. So it might be that this is the output of something involving the quotient or the product rule. And it turns out that it is something involving the output of the quotient rule using the second derivative. So what we're going to do is consider the function g of x, which is 1 over f of x. And this is actually defined in our particular situation because the output of the function at any value x is a positive real number. So to actually come up with reciprocating the function and taking derivatives of it takes the idea of playing around with this a little bit to see where you can represent this thing as the derivative of something involving f and a derivative of f. Okay, so if we actually differentiate this using the quotient rule, or if you want the power rule, writing this as f of x to the negative 1 and then using the chain rule. On that, we get negative 1 over f of x squared times the derivative of f. And so now we do have something involving f prime and f itself, and it'll turn out this is exactly the thing we need in order to use the inequality that we have. So now we'll compute the second derivative of g, and we'll take our time doing this. We'll take the negative out and then compute the derivative of the inside. So we have the derivative of the numerator, f double prime of x times the denominator, minus the derivative of the denominator, which is 2f of x times f prime of x by the chain rule, times our numerator, which is f prime of x, all divided by f of x raised to the fourth power. Okay, and now we have a common factor of f of x itself in the numerator and denominator. And if we actually get rid of that common factor, we're left with negative the quantity f double prime of x, f of x, minus 2 f of x prime all squared divided by f of x cubed. Okay, so we know a bit about these pieces. First of all, this inequality that we're actually given tells us that the numerator here is non-negative. Whereas because the function itself has a range that is the positive real numbers, the denominator is non-negative as well. 
So the entire expression we have for the second derivative is actually non-positive. It's less than or equal to zero. And so that gives us information about the function g itself. It must be a function that has a particular type of shape. So we'll go to the next page and take a look at the geometric interpretation of what this means in terms of the function g of x itself. So suppose we actually tried to graph this function g. Let's pick two particular points, a and b. Okay, because the second derivative of this function is non-positive, we have a graph that would look something like the following. All right, so because of this particular shape, we know something about slopes at different points. So if we plot the point at A and at B itself, and plot some other nearby points, maybe a point U that is less than A, and then a point B, a V that's less or greater than B, then we have these comparative slopes that look something like the following. We have this slope here, and this slope here, and this slope here. By the second derivative of g being non-positive, these slopes increase themselves. So we can write down a relationship between g of u, g of a, g of b, and g of v using this. And we'll fix a and b at the moment to try to compare their function values for g. So we have in particular that the slope g of a minus g of u over a minus u has to be greater than or equal to the slope g of b minus g of a over b minus a, and that in turn has to be greater than or equal to the slope g of v minus g of b all over v minus b. Okay, let's call this particular expression here the slope between the points a g of a and b g of b the number m, thinking of a and b as actually constant fixed values. Okay, now our function g itself is actually positive because f of x itself has positive real numbers as its range. So we can get a stronger inequality here, recognizing that the g values outputs are all positive, we get that g of a over a minus u is going to bound m from above because g of u itself is positive. And then also, this is bounded below by negative g of b over v minus b because g of v itself is a non-negative number as well. Okay, now let's look at the roles of each of these values. So here, this is a fixed number m. It's the slope between the points a, g of a, and b, g of b. And here we have an expression that's constant while this particular part of it, u, varies. Similarly, almost all of this part of the lower bound is constant except for this value here, v. So what happens as we take u to negative infinity, negative infinity since u is over here on the left, and v to positive infinity since v over here is on the right? Well. As u goes to negative infinity, the denominator of this expression right over here will actually go to positive infinity. And since the numerator is a fixed positive number, this expression here will go to zero. In a similar light, as v goes to infinity, this denominator is going to go off to infinity as well. And since this is a fixed constant in the numerator, we'll also get that this entire expression here goes off to zero and is always taking on these negative values. So this goes to zero as well. Okay, so by taking u to negative infinity and v to infinity, or in other words, making u arbitrarily negative and v arbitrarily high and positive, we get that this value m actually itself has to be zero, which then tells us, because a and b are different, that g of a and g of b are actually the same. So this function g of x is actually constant. And as a result, since g of x is the reciprocal of f of x, f of x itself is forced to be a constant function as well. So using a combination of the geometry on this page 
and the algebra we did on this page, we conclude that the only possible functions that satisfy this particular inequality, given the conditions that we have in the problem, are functions that are constants. Now, if you want, you can leave some comments in the chat on which constants are even allowed in the first place to complete this problem. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button, and we'll see you in the next video.